Hey actors, it's Wendy Lane Wright, the Hollywood Talent Manager. In this video, I want to talk to you about what is a talent manager and what does a talent manager do? And that's a question I get asked all the time, so I thought I'd answer it. And a lot of you don't know what a talent manager is. Sometimes you've only heard of a talent agent. And so there are certain questions like, well, should I get an agent or should I get a manager? Should I get an agent first or a manager first? Uh, I'll tell you, you guys need an agent, and, uh, and I'll tell you what an agent does. An agent helps you find work, and then they negotiate the contract, and then they close the deal like an employment agency. That's that. A manager helps design the overall path for your career. And I want you to think about what a manager does because it'll help you understand what you need to do as an actor. So whether you're an agent or a manager, what we do is we represent actors. So let's say I go to a play and I see a fantastic actor on stage and I think, oh my God, that person has so much talent. I really love their look or I love their vibe or their energy. And I talk to them after the play and I say, you know, do you have a manager? Do you have an agent? Like, what's your status? And they're like, no, I've just been doing theater, but I've been wanting to get into that, but I just don't know what to do. Great. Let me tell you what to do. So my job as a manager is I'm going to start to find out, okay, what are they passionate about? What kind of projects do they like to do? What kind of roles do they like to play? Where do they see themselves? In TV or film, comedy or drama? Both? What? Okay, then I'm going to start to develop a plan in my mind. Because as a manager, we're planning. We're always planning things. So, all right. So let me just do a five-year plan right now. I see that if you train with these people in comedy, that's going to prepare you if you want to be a sitcom actor. And if you train with these people for drama, that's going to help prepare you if you want to do dramatic TV roles and dramatic film roles. I also know when you get auditions, you need to coach with these people for comedy and these people for drama. And you're going to need to have, uh, you know, your headshots, your actor's access, your casting network. So, for example, two things. I have a very, very, very good friend. Uh, her daughter is a, is a talented little kid. She came out of the womb singing and dancing, no doubt. I'm not even lying to you. And I'm not surprised because her mother is Elisa Fiorillo, who uh, was a part of the New Power Generation for Prince for years and years and years. She sang with him for seven years. He produced her first albums. Uh, she went on tour with them all over the world, and she's one of my closest friends. And when she had her baby 18 years ago or almost, uh, that little kid came out singing and dancing, like always putting on little shows for us. And I was like, oh, boy, we got to entertain her here. Well, yeah. Her mother has been feeding that. The child can sing beautifully. Takes after her mother. The child can dance and the child can act. She's a triple threat. Uh, she's been starring in play after play after play. And now she wants to get into TV and film. And she's going to go to college. Now, my first thought is she doesn't need to major in theater. Okay, I'm always telling actors, don't major in theater. Major in business. Because business, and see, this is part of what a manager does. Thinks of the whole, like, career. So if you have a degree in business, you're going to be able to make money in a lot of different ways. That's going to support you while you're building your acting career. And you can minor in acting. That was my first uh, suggestion to her. The se second suggestion is you got to take my course right away. She needs to be in the training, learning about the business and learning how all these materials have to be put together. And she needs to learn how to act. And she needs to learn how to act in front of the camera and take on-camera classes. And I know that she's going to need a great Actors Access profile and she's going to need a great Casting Networks profile and she has absolutely no idea what those are yet or how to create those. So I'll be working with her mother to make sure that all of that gets done. Right? Now, when I have all of those materials, let's say I have all those, and listen, I'm planning on managing that kid so I'm not charging her for the course. I've given it to her mother for free and I will train her for free. Because I don't want anyone else's hands on that child, okay? That child belongs to me. She's been in my dreams and heart and spirit since the day she came into the world. And I want to make sure I have access to what's going on and make sure she's taken care of and nobody fucks with her. So I will make sure that I'm there, the one. And so what I'm going to need to sell that kid is I'm going to need her to understand this business. I need her to understand theater is very, very different than TV and film. Because in theater, it's very big, and you play to the back of the house, and there's big gestures, and there's big <gasps> overreactions, and none of that goes on television. None of that goes in TV auditions or film, because film is much smaller and much subtler. It's still, in, it's still intense, but it's internal. 
So watching her do theater for 10 years, I know that she's going to need to take some serious on-camera classes and scene study classes to learn how to bring that to here rather than out here. Okay, so we got to make that shift. As a manager, I know she has to make that shift if she's going to work in TV and film. So I'll help her by putting her in the right classes to do that. Then I'm going to need acting clips from her. And I don't need a demo reel because I can sell her without it, right? So I need some strong clips of her playing some really good comedy and some really good drama. And I always tell actors, just go to television, watch TV, and there's your scripts. You can see it all right there. So I'm going to give her mother some homework and the child. She's almost 18, so she'd get the homework too. Go watch television. Lots of it. What shows are you right for? Where do you see yourself? When you watch TV and you see roles, write them down in a notebook. Like I, I could play that role and that role and that role. And I you know, take a picture of the screen and create a little folder on your desktop and become aware of where you fit in in this business. What kind of roles you are right for. And I always tell people, pick the roles that are most like you right off the bat. That are most like you. Because that's how you get cast mostly right in the beginning of your career, right? So in this case, she's a, just adorable. She's beautiful. She's bubbly and loving and affectionate and kind and talented and energetic and well-spoken and thoughtful. And she's polite and she's well-natured and she's, she's well-mannered and she's just a good human being. So let's play those characters first. Let's play all those. She's a college student. She's smart. She's popular. The, maybe she's a cheerleader, the head of the, the, uh, the, the what is that called? The class president, the, uh, the queen of the prom. She is, she's, a, she's just the, 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 the girlfriend, the, 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 girl, the girl that every guy likes. She's fun. People love her. She's the head of a sorority. Play what you are. Play what you are. That's what she is. That's what I want in her package. I'm not going to try to sell her as the depressed, uh, anorexic uh, drug addict because that's nowhere near what she is. doesn't mean she can't play that someday. But when we're breaking into show business, we try to break in in the easiest way possible. And that means playing exactly what you are at the beginning, exactly what you are. So if you say to me, well, I don't want to be typecast. You want to be cast. Yes, you do. Because that's the only way you're going to get on television. And the way that you get cast on television is they figure out your type and they start putting you in those roles. So that's called typecast, which means you get cast. So as a manager, I will only make money when that kid books a job, right? So I could arrange a headshot photographer for her, which I was just talking to her mother about headshots. I want her to have headshots with different personality, different energy, different moods, different attitudes. I have certain clothes I want her to wear. There's things I want her to do because I know what's going to make her marketable. It's my job as a manager to know that. So I want her to do those things. And often as a manager, I go with my client to the photo session to make sure I get exactly what I want. Because I'm a salesperson and I'm going to be selling her to everybody I know. I'm going to be calling people up and say, you got to see this kid. She's amazing. She's talented. Here's her headshots. Here's her acting clips. Here's her actor's access. You've got to see her. She's amazing. So in order for me to pick up the phone and say that, I got to create materials that demonstrate that she's amazing. So headshots come first. I need great headshots. Clips can come first. Headshots, I don't care. Whatever I'm working on is going to be great. Now I need proof that she can act. I don't want theater footage that shows she can be over the top on a stage. That's not going to help me get her in TV auditions. So the first thing I got to do is get her into on-camera classes. All right, she already knows how to act. She already knows how to become the character. She already knows how to feel emotions. And she's already not, she already has a confidence in herself. I mean, she's a super confident kid. Uh, she's just a lovely being. But now she has to learn how to take a TV script and make strong choices that a casting director can look at in five seconds and decide if they want to bring her in for an audition. So as a manager, I know that, that what I'm going to be doing is submitting her materials to casting every single day, 65 times a day. And in order for me to do that and be successful, I know what I need to have from her. So I need a really strong clip of her playing the class president or the daughter who's having an argument with her mother or um, a daughter who uh, 
um, is going to the hospital because there's a pain that she doesn't, or she's with her mother who had some kind of situation because I need that footage for hospital shows. I need her to be the witness of a crime or, or a victim of a crime so I can get her in all those TV cop shows, right? So I know what I need from her and it's going to be her job to get it to me. Now, I don't need a whole demo reel. All I need are clips, 30 seconds of some really, really good acting. And once we pick the scene and she gets coached on it by like Tony Robinette or Kenzo Lee or Lisa Zambetti, any of the coaches, then I know that that footage, that that footage is going to be like, she's going to do her best, but a coach is going to make it even better. I want it even better because I want there to be no doubt that when I send that on to casting, they go, oh my God, who the hell is this kid? Where has she been? I'll be like, that's right. Bring her in, please, for an audition. And then once they say, yes, we will bring her in for an audition, they will send the script that they're working on, whatever role that is, they'll send it to me, and they'll ask me to give it to the actor, which I will. And the actor will learn that and work on that and apply their techniques that they learned in class and put themselves on tape. And as their manager, I will watch it first before I send it to casting. I'm going to look at it and see if it's good enough. Is it good enough? Did we hit all the points that were comedic? Did we mean every word that we were saying? If there's any place that it's not fully authentic and I don't, you don't mean it and I don't believe it, you're doing it again. You go, go do it again. And as your manager, I don't pass it on to casting unless it's good enough. And if it's not good enough, you go back to class again and again and again until it is, right? That's my job is to make sure that your materials are at the top level. Now that doesn't mean next year they won't be even better because every single time you take classes and you train for another year, your acting gets better, better this year than it was last year. So I need new clips because the ones from last year were great for then, but now you're better. So I need new clips. So throw all that out. Let's get new ones. I need new ones, right? So you're always developing the materials that go on your actor's access. Now, people say I was watching in my Facebook group. If you have not joined it, I would highly recommend. It's called Talent Managers for Actors. And that is a Facebook group with 113,000 actors in there. And there's probably 20 moderators that are all working actors and some agents and some casting directors. And we're giving free guidance and advice to actors every single day. So if you're not in that group, Talent Managers for Actors on Facebook, go join it. But what I'm always telling people in there is that your materials need to be so good that people can't deny you. That people can't deny you. And you don't need a demo reel. You just need your acting clips. And someone asked the other day, you know, do I need backstage or do I need actors access or do I need casting networks? You need, look, look, you need all of these things. Okay, you're just starting out. So you need to find auditions wherever you can. And even though as a manager, as an agent, we're going to be submitting actors on their behalf, you as the actor have to always be submitting yourself as well, looking for jobs. Because managers and agents are not submitting you on $100 a day jobs. We're submitting you on the $10,000 a week jobs, right? We're submitting you on the $1,500 a day co-star roles or the $9,000 a week guest star roles. We want you to get recurring roles on TV. We want you to make big money. So we're not submitting you on the little stuff you can submit yourself on. So some of the differences, uh, you know, backstage, you can find a lot of theater. Um, you can find regional theater. You can find student films, some feature films, some web series. Uh, but, you, you know, in your own region, join it. There's like a whole casting section. And you can also read tons of helpful articles and information about the business. This is show business. So better learn the business right? The second thing is Actors Access and Casting Networks. What are these two things? Well, Actors Access is a platform that agents and managers require. You must have it. You must have it. And Actors Access has mostly television, film, uh, short films, student films, but mostly TV and film. And then Casting Networks, which is another platform you really need to have to look for your own stuff. Uh, it's commercials, web series, other films, uh, industrials, music videos, all kinds of ways to get on set and get experience and work. So if I'm an actor, I have all three. 
And I'm submitting myself every single day on all of these platforms. And I'm getting auditions from all of these different platforms. And I can decide which one am I getting a lot of auditions from and then pay attention. What kind of roles am I getting asked to audition for? How is the industry seeing you? So as a manager, I'm thinking about all of this. When someone comes up to me and says, hey, I want to be an actor. What are your suggestions? I'm like, dude, I got a long list of shit you got to do. So do you really want to do them? Because if you don't really want to do it, I'm not going to waste my time. If you really, really want to be an actor, I'm going to give you a list of things you need to do. And we'll work on it together because that's what managers do. And we'll work on it together to make sure that you have everything you need so that when I'm ready to sell you to the casting directors I know and pitch you for projects, your materials will not let me down or you down. Your materials will be fucking great, right? Now, at my Winter Circle Academy, and I've talked about it many times, I don't talk about it enough, but I should talk about it more. There's a lot of people that do not have managers. And you need the guidance that a manager gives an actor. When we sign an actor, we give them a tremendous amount of guidance. But we can't sign everybody. I can't sign 5,000 actors, okay? I don't have time to, to do 5,000 actors. So what I did was I created a course that wrote down every single thing I need you to do as an actor. If I was managing you, you'd have to do these things. So here's the list. And also, you can come to my live Zoom class and I will teach you in a group. There's 60 of you at once. All right, 100 people at once. I'll tell you all what you need to do. Now you can ask me questions. I'll look at your materials. Show me your clips. Show me your headshots. Show me your actor's access. You don't have it? Let me show you how to make it. Let me see your cover letter. Are you ready for an agent or manager? Let me see. And at actors, uh, when we look at your actor's access, when anybody submits to me, I'm a manager, they submit, they go, look, could you represent me? I look at your actor's access. If it sucks, the answer is no. I look at your casting networks. If it sucks, the answer is no. I'm not interested, right? And I'm going to tell you how to make it better because I'm a teacher, I'm a coach, and I like to help people make it better. But I'm not going to represent you because I need to make money from when you book. And I can't, you can't book if you don't get in the room, the audition room. If I can't get you auditions, you don't even have a chance to book the job. And so there's no money going to be made. So I got to make sure that the people I represent can get auditions with their materials. Now, if I see something brilliant in you and I think, oh my God, this is so talented. This, oh, what a talent. I'm willing to develop it. I'm willing to work with this actor and help them get their materials up to par. I might sign them with the belief that if I work with them and get their materials up to par, they might be able to start getting auditions and book jobs. Now, I can only take on a couple of those people at a time. I can't have a whole roster of 100 people that don't have any credits, don't have any success, don't have any auditions, don't have materials, because I'd never make any money as, an, as, an, as a manager, and neither would agents. So we have a small portion of our roster, which is developmental, people that don't have TV credits, Maybe they don't have Actors Access or Casting Networks. Maybe they just started training. You know, they've got good natural talent, but they need to train it. And then everybody else has to be working a working actor because that's where we're going to make our money, right? So we've got the majority of people are working. Some of our people are just developing. And our, our job is to get these developing people into the working actor category. Now, as a manager, I'm an expert at that. Agents are experts at that. I want to tell you what it looks like if I signed... 50 new people today. Let's just say I was talking to you guys out there. I decided to sign 50 of you. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through all of the, all of the uh, submissions that come in. So the submissions usually are an email to me with headshots, acting clips, casting networks profile, actors access profile. I'm going to look at all that. And I'm going to see what's on them already. And if you didn't have any training, if you didn't go to Hollywood Winter Circle Academy, if you didn't learn what goes on them, it's probably not going to be very good. So I'm going to look at it. And if I see like, oh my God, there's so much work that, and first of all, this actor doesn't even, can't even act. So there's the hard question. Do I send them a note and say, you can't even act yet. Go learn to act and reach out to me again in two years. Or, and I try not to say it that way. <laughs> But that's probably what I'm thinking. I probably say, you know, um, acting is a craft. You have to learn how to act. 
You need to become a really good actor so people will pay attention to you. So here's a suggestion. Go take these acting classes and then come back and talk to me again in a year or two. Someone might get offended. Oh, well, I don't care. I just told you the truth. Go do it. Don't. That's not my business. Okay. Then let's say I'm looking through this and I see a couple really interesting headshots. And who is this? Let me take a look at this. What is this? Oh, I like this. This is an interesting look. This person, yeah, I like it. Where have they been training? Well, they've only taken a couple classes. Yeah, well, let me look at the clip. The clip is going to tell me whether they can act yet or not. There's different levels. Can they act yet or not? Yes or no? If they've been training a lot in TV and film and they've done scene after scene after scene after scene after scene, class after class for the last couple of years, they probably can act. If they're just starting out and they've only taken one month of classes, they probably can't. So I'm going to watch their little acting clip and I'm going to decide, do they suck or are they good? <laughs> can they act or not? Yes or no? And if it's no, how far away from being good are they? Like, do they absolutely have no idea what they're doing? Or do they have a pretty good idea what they're doing? They're just missing a few things. I got to judge, judge that because one of those is a lot of work and one of those are just a couple tweaks, right? The further away they are from being good, the longer it's going to take for me to make money if I sign them. Why am I talking about money? Because you need to understand this is a business, acting business, and agents and managers, they do all of this stuff so that they work with actors who will book jobs, who will make money, because agents and managers only get paid commission. They only get paid, we only get paid commission. We only get paid if you book the job. So if you don't book the job, we still do all the work, right? We still go get your headshots with you, we go over your clips with you, we look at your packages, we fix your profiles, we submit you to casting, we send you the sides, we coordinate your auditions, we look at your clips before you send them. And then if you get feedback from the casting director, we give it to you. If you go to callbacks, we set those up. We do all of that, and if you don't book the job, we still did all the work for nothing. Zero, zero, zero. Because it's one of the only jobs, I think, that works for free unless you work unless you work. So what's important to me as a manager is that you better learn how to work. <laughs> that makes sense, right? That means you better learn how to act, which means I need to know who are the great coaches. Who are the great coaches? As a manager, I know who the great coaches are in every single category. So that's my job is to look at an actor's work and think, ah, they need so much work in this area, this area, this area. You need to coach with this person, this person, and this person. Go do it. And let's talk about this again in six months. Let me see how good you've gotten. Let me see how much better you are. A lot of times I find actors, as soon as they say they want to be an actor, they go, yeah, I want to be an actor. Okay, great. They go, where can I get my headshots? Headshots? What the fuck you need headshots for? you got to learn how to act. We don't need headshots yet. I'm not submitting you to anybody until you can learn how to act. And you shouldn't be either, right? It's like act first. I always compare it to like basketball, like Michael Jordan, you know, or you know Shaquille O'Neal or whatever, Larry, Larry Bird or Steph Curry. It's like Steph Curry coming up to me and saying, hey, I want to play basketball. Okay, cool, man. Great. Where are you, where are you training? Training? I'm not training. I just want to play on the, on the Lakers. Hmm? Well, where have you ever played basketball before? Oh, never, never played basketball. I'm confused. You want to be a basketball player on the Lakers, but you've never played basketball before and you're not training in it. Get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? Oh, no, 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 no. I need someone to come to me and say, look, I play basketball every day. Uh, I belong to a, a league. I play with my school, with my college. I'm always playing on the on the weekends. I study all the games. I watch all the plays. I'm constantly in the gym. I'm working out all the time. I understand the game inside and out. Nobody can outwork me. I work harder than anybody else. I want to be on the Lakers. Okay, I will represent that. Now you're talking my language. You understand the business of basketball. Not just the dribbling and throwing it in. You understand the work ethic it takes, the amount of training it takes, the consistency, the discipline. You understand how 
You, you, you have to visualize the success, visualize yourself being on the team. You have to know you deserve it. You have to work hard enough to feel worthy of it. you got to be ready. So there's a different level of people that come to us. 50 people come to me and say they want representation. I'm throwing 95% of it out the door. It's going to be a no. I want you to understand that that's the numbers. Because only 5% of those 50 that say they want to be actors are in serious acting classes, working all the time, breaking down scenes, uh, doing plays, submitting themselves for short films, student films, web series. Uh, they're doing everything they can to learn how to act. Those are the only people I want to represent. I don't have any interest in any of the rest, and most agents and managers don't. Now, let's say I look at a thousand submissions or 500 and I look at 150 tapes and I narrow it down to like 50 that are pretty good. And let's say I decide, you know, they're good. They can act. They got the work ethic. At least they say they do. And I'm willing to represent them. I'll try. That's going to what's going to happen is I'm going to start submitting them for projects. Right. And those actors that are new to my roster are going to fall into three categories right off the bat. Maybe you don't know about this, but I'm going to tell you. Some of them are going to get auditions immediately, just right away, constantly, just getting auditions, getting auditions, getting auditions, getting auditions. That's a good face. Really, but that's how it, it's like, why? I don't know. They're just getting auditions, getting auditions, getting auditions, getting auditions. We submit them and they just get tons of auditions. Great. That's one category. Then there's two more. Some of them are going to get some auditions. They're going to get some auditions. We're going to submit them and submit them and submit them just as much as the others. These people are getting a shit ton of auditions. These people are just getting some. Okay. And then these people are getting none. Zero. None, none, none. None. And we're doing the same amount of work for everybody. So sometimes people will say, well, my agent doesn't get me out. They must not be working. That's not true. That's absolutely probably never true. We're probably always working on getting you auditions, but we know there's three categories, right? And which one are you falling into? Are you getting, you know, these people just get auditions all the time. Maybe their headshots are really good and casting loves their headshots. Maybe when they look at the headshots, they go, I love these headshots. And then they look at the acting clips and the clips are really, really good. The acting is believable. They had good energy. They knew their eye lines. They made connection with the reader. The acting was great. Or maybe they just have a really unique look, something that makes them very different. But whatever the reason is, they're getting a shit ton of auditions. Super. Now, I got to do some work on these two, obviously, because it's not happening that way. I need them to be in this category. I'm only going to keep the ones in this category. Right. So I can always tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm keeping those people. These people, I don't know yet. We'll see. So the ones that are getting some auditions, I got to figure out the problem as a manager. What's the problem? What's the problem here? Why are they only getting some auditions? Well, maybe their type is not in demand right now. That's not anything we can control. Maybe their headshots aren't strong enough yet. So I'm going to try new headshots. We're going to go shoot new headshots or I'm going to go back into the session I'm going to look at all the other headshots and try some other ones. I'm going to try headshots until I start getting more auditions. I'm going to try different looks, different expressions, different emotions. I'm going to try different headshots. I, I, what if these clips aren't strong enough? Let's get some new clips. Let's try some different clips. I need, to, I need to change these clips. I'm going to be changing the molecules over here until I can start getting these results. Right? So let's say I do that. Maybe it takes me six months to do that. I got to try all these different headshots. I got to try different clips. You got to record different clips. You got to go shoot some more headshots. Uh, these people are just getting a shit ton of auditions. Great. These people I'm trying to move over into this category. As a manager, my job is to move them over to this category to troubleshoot the problem and fix it. All right. So let's say I've been able to do that. We change up the headshots. We change up the clips. We take some down. We add some new ones. Now they're getting auditions. Whew. Great. Move over. Now I got this group over here. They're not getting any auditions at all. Zero. I try the same thing. We try new headshots. We try new acting clips. None of that's working. I try for six months. I try for a year. None of that's working. They're still not getting auditions. I drop them. And so does everybody else. 
So does everybody else. Something's not working. And I'm not going to spend any more time trying to figure it out. It's not working for me. So I'm done, right? I've tried. I've tried all the things I know. I've tried all the things I can do, you know. And sometimes I might say, look, put your, go create your own short film. Put yourself in it and show casting what you can do. Let's create some more clips. Let's do this. Let's do that. And sometimes some people just can't get any traction with me. I'm getting tons of auditions with these people, but none over here. And all agents and managers have the same exact scenario. Every single one of us, we have the same scenario, okay? We have people we sign that immediately get traction in auditions. And some of them just book, 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 book. Some, we get no results at all. And we drop them. And sometimes they go to another agency and that agency gets results. I don't know. We don't know why. It's like, ooh, we don't know. But ask any agent or manager if this phenomenon exists and they will tell you it does. Now, one thing I, I didn't mention, which I need to mention to you now, is in these categories over here, the ones that were automatically getting auditions all the time and the ones that I was able to help get to the level where they can get auditions, right? Now I got to watch for other criteria. Are they getting booked? Are they booking the jobs that are going on? How often are they booking? Are they never booking? Because if they get 100 auditions and they don't book one, now i got to figure out what's that problem. What's that problem? Why? Why aren't they booking? Or if they go on 100 auditions, 200 auditions, and they don't get any callbacks at all. No callbacks. Some of them are booking, 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 booking. Great. We have no problem. You're getting auditions and you're booking. We're making money. You're staying on the roster. I'm excited. You're the most important people on the roster for most agents. Those are the most important people, the ones that are booking, right? Then you've got the other ones. They're getting all these auditions, but for God's sake, they're not getting any callbacks. They're not going to producers. So what's the problem? So as a manager, I got to figure out, okay, what's the problem here? I got to watch these tapes. I got to watch the acting. I got to figure out why aren't these people. So sometimes I will go to class with the actors that are not booking and I'll watch their work as a manager. I'll sit in class and watch their work. I'll watch the teacher give the actor direction and I'll see if the actor takes it. If the actor does the same exact thing that they just did and the teacher said, try this and the actor didn't shift it up. I can see that the actor needs work with their technique, that they're making a choice and they're sticking with it. And they practiced it that same way. So many times they can't change what they're doing. That will be a reason why they can't get a call back. Because let's say they're in an audition and a casting director says, that was great. Let's try it this way. And then the actor does the same exact damn thing they just did. It's not a callback. So they may be getting a lot of auditions, but they're not getting any callbacks. Well, same if we go to producers. The producers might say, "Let's that was really great. Let's try it this way. And the actor can't take the direction. I learned that because I watched them in class. I can't tell that from the self-tape. Right? I can't tell that they were given a direction that they didn't follow. I wasn't in the audition room, so I wouldn't know it that way. So as a manager, I'm not getting paid to go sit in the acting class and watch the, uh, the actor work, but I do it because I want to know what the hell's going on. Why isn't my actor booking? I also know that I'm going to send my actor to people who specialize in teaching actors how to book actors. Because there are people that specialize in that. And if my actors are not booking, I'm sending them directly to them. Like, come on now. We got to get you booking. Because remember, agents and managers only make money when? When the actor books the job. So if you're getting auditions but not booking it, we're still not making any money, which isn't good for you. It's not good for me. If that's not a winning partnership yet. Now, let's say I'm working with those people and they start their callback numbers start to go up, but they still don't book. That means we got to work more on the booking aspect of it. And it's probably, it might be a confidence issue. Sometimes actors are their own worst enemy, you guys. Ah, you know, I probably, they go in there and go, hi, I don't know if I'm right for this role or not. Um, you know, I'm not sure why you called me in. I don't really fit the type. Why are you saying that out loud? Don't say that. Don't say that. If they called you in, they think you might be right for the role. Shut the hell up. Do the job. Don't criticize yourself and make them think you aren't worth hiring. And I, I, I see this all the time. 
right? Even at my winter circle, especially when actors first join HWC and they don't know what they're doing yet, right? They come to HWC, they don't know what they're doing yet. And they say, I want to show you a tape, but I don't know what you're going to think about it. I'm not sure if it's my best work. Arr! Stop that. Stop beating yourself up. Stop telling me I'm not going to like it. Stop telling me what's wrong with it. Let me just watch it. I'll tell you if I like it. I'll tell you what's wrong with it. I'll tell you where it needs work. Don't go telling me things I might not even see. <laughs> Your insecurities. Keep them to yourself. So a lot of times so that when actors aren't getting the results that they want, I then have to start figuring out if it's a mindset problem. That's another thing that a manager is going to have to do. Is this person sabotaging themselves by not believing in themselves, by not thinking they're good enough, by thinking they don't deserve to be successful, by thinking maybe someone else should get the role, uh, I don't have the talent, maybe I don't have the ability, maybe I'm not right for it, I don't know how to memorize, blah, 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 blah. all this negativity, all that negative thinking is going to cause the casting director to feel that vibe and just turn, shut you down and say no. So listen, when I'm a manager, just signing 50 new actors, I have no idea which of these categories you're going to fall into. No one does. That's why we have a one-year contract, right? That's why we have a six-month out clause. It's like, give us six months and let's see if we can get a job offer for you. If you haven't been offered a job in six months, you're welcome to go. Or we're welcome to drop you. But that's going to give us some time to see if your headshots work, if your acting clips work, if you're getting callbacks, if you're getting producer sessions, uh, if you have the right attitude. We also are going to look at, are you turning in your auditions on time? Because if I say that's due tomorrow at 4 o'clock and you go, oh my God, but I have a camping trip and I can't go home, go do something else. You're not going to be a client. No. The actors that you see on TV, those people are doing it for a living because they are dedicated and they put it above all else. You know, they figure out how to juggle family and husbands and children and school or whatever you got to do. But they always turn their auditions in early, if not on time. Oh, always, always, always. There's no excuse. They always do the work. And if I say, are you in class? They're always in class. They're always training. Always training. Because like I go back to Steph Curry. Can you imagine him playing basketball and he's never training? He doesn't train in between games. Imagine how sore and how much injury would occur to any athlete if they weren't training, practicing, doing drills and warming up and lifting weights and eating right and getting enough sleep and doing all of the work in between games. They would get injured, right? And so will you as an actor if you're not doing all the things you need to do in between auditions. So what are those in between things? Obviously, taking acting classes. And nobody learns how to act overnight. Uh, if someone says to me, yeah, but Jennifer Lawrence never had an acting class. What? She has an acting coach. She trains privately with a coach. She doesn't have to be in class. Some people prefer coaches, individual coaches, one-on-one -on -one coaches. And I have a great one named Rod Rowland, who is just one of the most phenomenal one-on-one -on -one coaches you will ever come across. I think he's got like a 20 week program. He's a long time working actor and he teaches you how to act. And, and it's just you and him. So if you're looking for that one-on-one, -on -one, he's your guy. There are lots of group classes you can be in. Sometimes people say, you know, do I, uh, which better, uh, in person or online? I don't believe in either or, why not both? Take some in person, but get your classes online because that's how you're gonna train with the best of the best of the best. In the past, you had to live in L.A. in order to train with L.A. coaches. Not anymore. You can live in Timbuktu. You can train online with the best of the best in New York, London, Atlanta, L.A. The great, great coaches. And I highly recommend that you do. Because you're only going to be as good as the people that teach you. Can you imagine if I always like to use basketball because my dad played college basketball on a scholarship and he was drafted to the pros and a lot of other stuff. He got injured and he couldn't play. But he trained his ass off. And the better coach you have, the better they're going to pull the greatness out of you because they can see the greatness in you and they know it's in there and they work to pull it out of you.
And that's the kind of coach I am. When I work with someone, I can see the greatness in you and I'm going to work hard to pull it out. And I'm not going to tolerate your excuses. I don't want to hear your bullshit. I just want to see you do great work. I want to see you succeed. A lot of my actors that I work with, I've got six series regulars now. I'm so proud of that, right? Because they were people that had no acting career when they came to HWC. Zero. A lot of them had no credits, no training. They weren't ready for an agent or manager. But because I'm the coach and the teacher there, and I am a manager, I know exactly what to tell them to do. I know exactly what to tell you to do. I know exactly how to get your career started and how to help you build it. And now I've trained 4,700 actors at Hollywood Winter Circle Academy. 4,700. And thousands of them are working in TV, film, commercials, voiceovers. I mean, thousands of them are working. I, I can't watch TV anymore without seeing my people all over the place. I see them on episodic television, network television, FBI, Law and Order. Uh, I see them on commercials. I hear them. I just see them everywhere. I see them in the movies. I mean, and it's really exciting to me. I made a decision uh, when I started Hollywood Winter Circle Academy a couple years ago that I was going to train 10,000 actors. And I'm going to stick to that because at 10,000 actors, I'm going to stop. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I've got 4,700. It's almost 4,800 now that I've trained. So I'm almost halfway to my goal. My goal is to train 10,000 actors on how to be great, how to be confident, how to build an acting career, how to get all your materials together, how to work with agents and managers, how to do great auditions, who to train with, how to build your package, how to make more money so you can afford your career and give you that one-on-one -on -one support like in, we have group classes, but I talk to each of you individually. What's going on with you? Let me see your clips. Let me see your, your uh, actress access. That's not right. Fix this. Go do this. Go do that. Here's your homework. See you next week. We have three classes a week though. So it's usually like, see you tomorrow. We have classes Wednesday nights. We have classes Thursday nights and we have classes Fridays. So actors can take three classes a week. That's 12 classes a month. That's 144 classes a year. You can take as many of them as you want. And you only pay one time. And it costs $449 for the whole year of training. Why is it so low? Because I want you to take the course. Because I want you to get the knowledge, the experience. I want you to work with an expert. I also bring in tons of other experts, okay? I bring in agents, managers casting directors. And I don't charge you any more for any of that. I don't charge you to have workshops with casting directors. I don't charge you to have workshop intensives with agents and managers. I don't charge extra for any of that. The course, so you realize that there's two components, okay? Well, three. One component is a recorded modules. There's six modules. And there's 65 videos that are all pre-recorded, right? And the way I created it is, and pay attention to what I'm saying to you. I want you to understand what this course is because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. And it's going to change your life. It's going to help you. I made a list. Let's say you came in my office and said, hey, Wend, I want to be an actor. What do I have to do? I'm going to write it down. I made a list. Here's 65 things. 65 things? Yeah, but you don't have to do them all at once. How about just one every other day? There's 365 days in a year. Do you think you could do one every other day? <laughs> okay, right? Well, let's just say you did it 65 days in a row. Thank you, you're done. But you get a year in the course, and I'm giving you 65 things to do. Go do them. Come back and show me. Go do the next one. Come back and show me. Go do the next one. Come back and show me. You didn't think it was going to happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. Steph Curry doesn't go on the NBA overnight. He has 65 things he needs to do. But if we do it one at a time, then it gets done. And when you are trying to take on a big dream and a big goal, you need accountability. You need someone to say, let's do it. Keep going. You're doing great. You're on the right track. Looks good. Keep going. Let's go. Let's go. What? You didn't feel like getting class tomorrow? Well, come tomorrow. Come the next day. Let's go. You need that. That's how we move forward. Everyone needs it. It's called accountability and it's called a coach. It's called somebody that makes you accountable, that makes you keep your word to yourself, 
and makes you do the thing that's going to help you achieve the dream. You need someone in your corner who believes in you and fights for you to be successful. And that's me. That's what I do, right? So the first component is there's 65 videos and you get them for life. Once you buy the course for $449 for the entire fucking year, you're welcome. Once you get the course, you get it for life. So those videos are yours forever. You can take three years to complete them if that's what you want to do, or you can complete it in one year. That's up to you. I'm going to work with you on it for a year. Okay. Then you get the workbook and the workbook is phenomenal. It is like a step-by-step -step blueprint for how to become an actor and build an acting career from scratch. Step by step by step. All you got to do is follow it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to figure it out. I laid it all out for you because I do this for a living. So I just put it in a workbook that you then get, take it. It's yours forever. You will always have the answers for how to be an actor. You'll never be confused again. You're welcome. Then there's another component, the live classes, where every week, three times a week, we look and give you feedback over your materials, answer questions, give you homework. And I bring casting directors to come in and look at it. And they'd say, I'd say, you know, is that, is that ready for a callback? Mm. I wouldn't give them a call back yet. Why not? Now that's what you're not going to get in an audition. Okay. You're not going to get that feedback in an audition. When you do an audition, they say, thank you. That was fantastic. And you never hear really what they thought about it. But at HWC, we have the same casting directors you're auditioning for. And they tell you exactly what they think about the work. And if it's ready for a callback, yes, I would have called you back on that. One of the people that teaches uh, at HWC is Lisa Sambetti. She cast Criminal Minds for like 160 episodes, okay? She's cast thousands and thousands of actors. And she's watched thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of tapes and scenes. So when she teaches once a month, every single month, you can bring her every your scenes and she looks at it. And she says, I have given you a call back, yes. No, not ready. Go do it again. Fix this, this, this. Bring it back next month. Right, bring it back when I come back next time. The beautiful thing about working with casting directors is they can tell you why they cast people and why they don't, why they give you callbacks and why they don't, if they would have sent you to producers or not and why, and you're also meeting them so that you're getting to build those relationships. So if they do see something you're right for, they will call you in, right? Now, I also bring in agents and managers, and they tell you, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, the actors on our roster that are successful, this is what they do. The actors that are working on TV, this is what they do. The ones that don't, this is what they do. Don't do this. Do more of this. And a lot of times they sign people right in HWC because they look at your materials and they're like, oh my God, who's this actor? And then they go, Wendy, I want to meet with that person. And then I set that meeting up, right? So you've got industry relationships that you're building at HWC that are helping you start to meet people and you're understanding the business and you're getting your package together. And that's why when you come out of HWC, you are miles, you are so far ahead of the people that are not in the course. You are so far ahead. There was an article that was written in Deadline this week. Uh, it was an article that said, should you pay coaches to teach you the business? And the answer was yes. Yeah. Because you have to learn the business side. It's show business, right? And I make it really affordable because I want everybody to do it. And I'm talking about the money because it's an investment. But I'm not asking you to spend your money on a class you don't need. You need it. But it's also to make you marketable enough to go make money, right? You're not doing all of this just to take classes so you can say, oh, yeah, I take classes. You're becoming an actor because you want to tell stories. You're becoming an actor because you want to make movies. You want to play different characters. You want to be on television. Well, those things pay. Those things pay a lot of money, right? Series regulars can make $100,000, $200,000 an episode. And if you're on a show like Seinfeld or Friends, you make a million dollars an episode. When you book a pilot, sometimes they pay you $40,000 to shoot that pilot. Even if it doesn't get picked up, you still get paid. That's why the training is so important because they pay so much money for what you do. That's why you got to be really, really good. Now, I told you HWC has six series regulars now. 
We also have three actors who have won Emmys. And we have two actors who have been in Oscar-nominated films. What? And thousands and thousands of actors working on TV and film. And I want you to be one of them. So if this was helpful to you, I tell you, stop what you're doing and go join. Go to HollywoodWinnersCircle.com. HollywoodWinnersCircle.com. Come get the support and the guidance. And I'll tell you another thing. You need to be around other people who see the same vision and want the same success you do. And they're like, yes, we can do this. We're doing it together. We're a family. We've got each other's back. I know you can do it. And then we celebrate each other's wins, you know? Every single time someone books a, a TV show or a film or a commercial or makes their first big check or, you know, gets an agent or manager, we're like, hell yes, yes, you go, do it. You deserve it. You're worth it, right? A lot of times when people want to be an actor, there's no one in their family that believes in the dream. That does not help you. That makes it harder. And I don't want that for you. I really don't. So I'm creating a community where you're going to get the support, the love, the guidance, the hell yes that you need. And I want you to take this with you because I'm going to go. I got to go. I got things to do. But I want you to take this with you. No one else can see the dream in your head but you. So you got to believe in it. You got to see it and believe in it. See yourself on set. See yourself working with some great, great actors. See yourself receiving that check. Be surprised by how big it is, you know. See yourself working as an actor, signing with an agent or manager, and know that it is possible that you can work. There's so much work today. It is so possible. And I don't care if you're starting at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. There's work for everybody. There's work for everybody. So I wish you success and I wish you great luck. And I am so committed to actors. And I, and I tell you why. I was burst into tears crying on my way to a meeting today. Because I just love you guys. When I think about the people in the world that I love the most, of all the people, it's actors. People that I really love in this world are actors. I love every movie I've seen. I love every TV show. Every bit of acting I've seen. I love every time I've sat in the movie theater and watched a show and got taken into another world. I love my TV shows and binge watching. I love actors. And out of the seven or eight billion people that are on the planet, whatever they are now, actors are my favorite. And that's why I do what I do, because I want to help you do what you were born to do and what you were made to do. So stay close to me. Keep watching my channel. I'm, I'm happy to be of support. Go to my free website, Talent Managers for Actors. Get on my news list. When, my newsletter, when you join it, you have to put your email in and just start getting my emails. And I'm going to keep keeping you pumped up. And I'm going to be on your ass until you get into the winner circle because that's what you need. It's going to help you be successful. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. I love you. See ya.